the main group of people are now standing at the cliff side. Uh, Leandra, who is a giant spider, has made a gruesome discovery. A uh, pile of the watchmen's bodies are left and sticking her spindly, gross spider arms into the pockets. She found a a letter written to Harvey. The same person that you guys thought you left back at the camp with Budrum. Leandra has not passed this information on to the rest of you who are all standing at the top of the cliff side, about 30 feet up. She will, but she has to scamper up the cliff. Uh huh. <laughs> and make sure that Tom's not watching. <laughs> So probably right up behind him. Wave her Tom legs at him. Tom has been drinking from his flask, by the way. Once <laughs> <laughs> so, um, while she's standing behind him, she'll shape shift back to human. All right. She also found a very adorable little. This this is uh, good for one free hug. Right. <laughs> and it's <laughs> reusable. Yes. <laughs> And as soon as she reaches human form, she'll say, I think Boudrum's in trouble. I'm not sure who that is, but I don't think it's Harvey. I don't think it's one of those people. They're all down there dead. So oh, no, I think it's, it, I don't think it's that big of a deal. That uh, Harvey fellow seemed pretty nice. Where'd you come from, by uh, the way? I was standing right behind you. Didn't you notice? Well, I don't have eyes in the back of my head yet. Good thing. <laughs> I'm going to turn and just start going back. Yep, I'm and she's headed that way. Yep. All right. No more Tom explanation. Can, Tom can stay there all by himself. Yeah, nope. <laughs> if you don't think it's important enough. Oh, no. Oh, no. Tom just looks out and is like, mm, look at that sunset. <laughs> <laughs> Tom is actually looking around for the spider, and then he will uh, fall the gate behind the Oh, yeah, they had a friendly rivalry thing going. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were the two cats hissing at each other. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you guys are all headed back? Yep. Yeah. Okay, are you guys running back or are you walking back? Uh, just well, walking pretty quickly. Knowing, knowing Leander, is as long as we have, as long as I have, I'd say Rowan's probably booking it. So probably, probably up with Talon and running to see what the heck is going on. Okay. Tom is probably a bit behind because he doesn't think it's very serious. Yeah. <laughs> Griff is finding a way to be at the back. I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, while you guys are running, Yasmin, you find yourself standing in a different place than you were just a few moments bef before. Uh, as you look around, you are standing in a lightly wooded area, and you can see out into the distance that you are on the top of a mountain. And as you watch... You see a man with a lot of holy symbols walk into a cave with another man. And a few moments later, you hear a lot of screaming. Would she be able to... I think she's going to try to sneak up to get a look using the wall as cover. Okay. If that's something you in are a good 50 feet away. Okay. So uh, go ahead and make a stealth check. Okay. Thirteen. Just a minute. I'm checking a stat on my end. No problem. Okay. As you are creeping along, um, it's not... You don't feel as if you've been spotted by anything, though uh, you are staying low to the ground and really trying to keep your steps quiet. How close are you trying to get? 
she's gonna try to get at the mouth of the cave, um, like being able to go to the right side and peek over pretty much. If that okay. makes sense. Try to be like within 10 feet of the cave mouth if possible. Okay. As you stare into the cave, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Okay, she has 120 foot dark vision if relevant. Ah. Mm. Twelve on perception. Okay. You can hear that the screams are starting to die down from inside. No pun intended. Um, oh man. <laughs> that was dark. <laughs> Ow. From out here, you can see that as you walk into the cave, it does curve off to the right. And from where you're standing, you see a boot. Just an empty boot laying in the center oh, of man. the floor. Do I see any footsteps in terms of what direction they go? Uh, there's really only one direction in into the cave. Okay. So it just goes in and then it curves to the right. Okay, then I think she's going to try to follow that way. Um, she's going to try to ready uh, an Eldritch Blast if that's possible. Uh, so okay. if someone attacks her. And uh, sticking to the walls as usual in case of cover. Okay. Um, using your using your stealth check from earlier, as you creep in, you notice that the ground is much, much more uh, gravelly. There are a lot of smaller rocks. It's a little bit harder to keep your footsteps quiet in here. As you start to notice that your your footsteps are making a little bit more noise, I'll give you the opportunity if you want to to roll another stealth check. Yes, please. Twenty five. Nice. You float atop the rocks as you step. <laughs> As you peek around the corner, you see a very large opening. And in the center of the room, you see a, uh, a man, about average size, standing over what looks now to just be the torso of the dwarf that walked into the cave before. He's holding a glaive in his hands as he stares down, and he hasn't noticed you. Okay. Um, the rest of you start to approach the cave. And as you are running, you do not notice anybody outside. You don't see Budrum or the man. Oh boy. Yeah, she's not worried about stealth at this point. She just wants to get in and see what what is going on and see if they can do anything. I agree. Right. Leander's not going to try anything stealthy, stealthy at do all. Do I hear them outside? You will. You will hear them coming. In fact, Leander's calling Boudrum. And Boudrum. not only do you hear, but so does the man who glances up. With your 25 stealth roll, you're <laughs> able to duck away before he sees you. So as he's running away, when he has his back to me, uh, is there something I want to try to do? So he is not running away, actually. Oh, okay. Um, he has looked up, hearing Leandra say, uh, scream out, or yelling out to Budrum. And you see him throw his glaive off to the side. And he sits down on the floor and he starts to hold his leg. Can I incite his intent? Mm-hmm. Nat one. 
for a seven. Okay. <laughs> Man, you have no idea why he is dipping his hand into the dwarf's blood and smearing it all over himself. <laughs> is that what he's doing? Yes. Interesting. And you hear the footsteps starting to enter inside of the cave. What are you going to do as they are coming from behind you? Okay, it will, will she be seen if, like, they come around the corner, really? Uh, no matter what, pretty much? Not necessarily. Your stealth is pretty high. Um, I think uh, she's going to try to stay hidden and watch for now. Okay. So you duck into the shadows very close to the wall as the rest of you run in. What you see is a dwarf mass lying on the floor. You immediately recognize Budrum lying dismembered on the ground and you see Harvey covered in blood. And he looks he looks up at you and he says I, I don't I don't know what happened. It was it was so fast. Leander will simply walk toward him. Stop lying. You're not Harvey. Griff's gonna start circling right, like around the wall. What? What do you mean? I, I'm I'm Harvey. That is I, me. I found all the dead people, and a letter started to Harvey, who you are not. He skitters back. Uh, still sitting down. Uh, I, I I don't know what's going on. Stop! Stop this! I think we should make him stop breathing. I agree. He holds his I hand out, that. and his glaive comes rocketing toward his hand. Whoa! Hold on a second here, guys. Let's, let's just talk for a second. Oh boy! <laughs> Do you see Budrum on the ground? He killed him. Um, I we don't know that. He gets to his feet. Ah, uh, where's that 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 limp? What was that? What? Fine. None of you will leave. And he, immediately his skin color changes, becomes a very dark bluish gray, and he starts to grow taller. Yikes. And in a matter of seconds, a very tall, hulking ogre stares back at you with pitch black eyes where they should be white and white pupils. Since we're not going to leave... Tell me one thing. Why? What did he do to you? Who needs a reason? And he raises his glaive. Well, you're right about that. You're someone I won't regret killing. Nope. Everybody so, roll initiative. Yes. Would I be able to make an attack before initiative? Um... You did have that Eldritch Blast ready, so I would let you do that. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Ouch. So that's gonna be for the first one 13 to hit with 7 force damage. And the second one is 17 to hit for 8 force damage. Alright, just a minute. So... Alright, what was the first? 13 to hit. That's, That's gonna, gonna miss. miss. Okay, and then the second one is 17 to hit. And that one will hit. Okay, that hits for 8 force damage, and I'm just gonna roll initiative now. Alright. Um, not one on initiative for a four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> S- 
17. Uh, 14 here. Sorry, right. I had to roll it twice. The dice thing was being stupid. I got a 9. 12 for Griff. Okay, give me just a second. I have to turn off the Discord reading things to me. Uh, it's yeah, really it's probably, jamming it's me up a little bit. slow and catching it. I'm hoping that Leandra's attack rolls are better than her initial. Oh no! Why would oh, you get? No. I got a two. Ooh. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm just sitting back here. You should have spent less time talking and more time fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom. <laughs> Says the person who didn't think it was important. To, right. Who wanted to talk to the ogre? Kid. Yeah. Yeah, but you were you were having all those quips at the end ah, there when he was getting ready to stab us. Oh, well, that's, that's fair. Just laying there that's bleeding. fair. It's not a big deal. I guess Talon's gonna have to impersonate Budrum and start calling Tom Fishy, because someone still needs to keep it alive. <laughs> I, think, I think we all need to call him Fishy, honestly. Aww. And now we'll have to start that bar, you know, guys, right? I uh, was just yes. the funny thing was I was talking to Jim in an email and I said, "Don't worry, Talon will keep Budrum's tavern alive." <laughs> yep. <laughs> And he wrote back, he said, it's bar. his life's work. Or, yeah, Budrum's bar or Budrum's rest or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yep. The buddy shack. Aw. <laughs> what was that? The buddy shack. That's yes. Good. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I heard something about buddy, but I didn't catch the second part of it. It kind of was quiet, quiet at the end. Aw. Okay, so who got from 25 to 20 on their initiative? Okay, uh, 19 to 15. I got 17. All right. Sorry. No worries. Okay, who got uh, 14 to 10? I got 14. Okay. So that was Mike and Jesse? Yep. Okay. And okay, everybody else is below a ten then. Yep. At least it sounds that way. Yep. Yikes. So uh Tom, Leandra, and Hyrule are all or uh <laughs> Yasmin. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Names are hard. Are all at the bottom of the Did you explain to him about our combat thing, Eric? Or were you going to wait and do that? Like, in, oh, awesome. I did partially. Um, cool. So we it's, can kind of explain it. It's group cool. initiative uh, based on who rolled in a certain bracket, it seems like. Yes. Cool. And we take our turns at the same time, ideally, in terms of how that works. Mm-hmm. Would it be best to describe Yasmin's look now or after the battle? 
Oh, um, give me just a minute. I'm going to turn down the music a little bit. Yeah, right. just just a tad. And there we go. What did he ask if if uh, we were describing? I missed that because of music. Cause... Oh, what do you you all prefer if I describe Yasmin now as she steps ah, out? Got you. Got you. Yeah. Um, describe Yasmin. Um, as she steps out and launches this Eldritch Blast. Okay, yep. so she And then stands... we'll have to describe ourselves too eventually. Yeah. So, but... yeah. She seems to be a drow uh, dark elf that stands pretty tall at about six foot one. Slightly, just slightly over probably because of her shoes. Kind of looks in about, if in human years, her early to mid twenties. Uh, nimble frame, obsidian kind of purple shiny tinted skin um, she kind of doesn't have many ble- blemishes on her uh, she has strange eyes where the irises are red and the whites of her eyes are strange almost inky black uh, they're kind of wide naturally and her gaze seems to shift almost immediately from her hand where there's a almost a green flame that's forming as she hu- attempts to hurl two of them at the ogre, uh, quickly glancing around at the party, a kind of slight nod going on. Um, she seems to kind of move with a slight sway in her step, and even just idly on her own. Her, even her leather armor seems kind of fancy, uh, seeming relatively new. Uh, and she has long flowing white hair and uh, a red, a crimson, scarlet kind of mask covering around her eyes, pretty much. All right. So describe that the way your Eldritch Blast looks as it rockets toward the creature. So it's. It's kind of a ball of almost kind of a dark green energy that forms. Her hands are almost kind of like claws at the tips. She kind of almost like playing a piano seems to move her fingers, uh, trying to build up energy. And as they fly forward, it's almost kind of a bit like a lightning bolt in terms of its speed and a spear, but it has a slight curvature was that it's like planning almost like throwing a curveball almost what is a very slight curvature at the end to try to get a better angle and the first one goes just a bit wide under its arm the second one hitting its probably left ab uh squarely as it kind of knocks it back just a bit nice all right as this uh projectile catches it off guard its attention turns to you and it points its glaive in your direction all right so the uh creature who is mostly still an oni um is going first then uh Rowan, Talon, and Griff. You guys are in a group going after. Yes. Um, and then there is another something that hasn't yet. Oh, no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, up. right. <laughs> and then afterward is everybody else uh, Leandra, Tom, and Yasmin. Ah. I'll have to look up this creature after the game because I'm curious. Because the whole yeah, shape changing thing. Mm-hmm. Yikes. Um, so, standing directly in front of it, I believe, was Leandra, and Griff had started to circle behind. Oh, no. It's going to charge forward. It's going to sweep a claw toward Leandra while holding its glaive (laughs) up above its head and charging at Yasmin. So let's see okay. what happens. All right. Can we roll? Okay. 
Uh, Leandra, 16 to hit? At the moment, yes. Okay. And Yasmin? Oh, 18 to hit? Um, can I Ow. use cutting words here? Yeah, you ha that's a reaction, so you can use yes. it. And that's a subtracts the d6, right? Ooh, yeah, that's a one, so that's still oh, gonna no. hit. Okay. <laughs> I think she try to, she try to almost kind of yell at it away and kind of like she gets cut off it as it hits her. All right, Leandra, as the creature charges by you, um, you can use your uh, opportunity attack if you wish at this point. It's running directly past you, but it is going to sweep its arm out and try to grab you with its claw. Okay. As it hits, you will take seven points of uh, piercing damage. Okay. As sharp nails dig right into your side. Ow. Okay. Ow, ow, ow. Um... Sure, I will take an opportunity attack. Okay. Um, the one who was behind when when the charge started, do they get an opportunity attack or not? Um, I'm not sure that Griff would have been that close because he tends to stay kind of far away. But yeah, I was off along the wall. Yeah. Sixteen, Eric. Sixteen. Hits. Okay. Let me check on something. Her club isn't all magicked up right now because I haven't gotten right. an action. So, okay. It is still magical, by the way. It still has a plus one to hit, plus one to damage. Yep. Um, by, by the way, I roll your rapier also has that. <laughs> Oh, okay, it's plus one right here? Plus one, yes. So okay. three. Cool. So three points of damage as you reach out with your club and smack it. Where are you hitting it? Um, it just kind of moved past her, right? Right. Pro um, probably just on the arm. I think it's a kind of a glancing blow at this point. All right. So as you feel the claws dig into your side and rip their way out. Ow. As it continues on toward this Ow. person standing over in the shadows. So Yasmin, you are going to take uh, 12 points of damage as this creature swings its glaive down directly onto your shoulder. You can feel it dig into your shoulder. Almost as if it's, it's cut directly through your leather. She's gonna grit, grit her teeth and kind of scowl at it as she kind of winces at the blow, not expecting it. And it will pull the glaive out and uh, glance around, turning slightly so that way everybody else is not to its back, but still trying to keep Yasmin kind of in its uh, engaged zone, essentially. Mm -hmm. It feels a little cornered. Not gonna lie. <laughs> and we move on to Rowan. Rowan, Talon, Griff. Um, All right, how, how close am I to this thing? You are within range, but you are not right up on it. So if you wanted to, you could run up to it. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, does that go for all of us? Yes, everybody is within range right now. All right. Um, you are out of range if you specify that you're out of range. Right, cool. Uh, she will go ahead and run up to it and attack it with her... Mm. Uh, I think the the plus one was to the um, ice dagger, right? I think we chose. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. All right, so just regular rapier attack then. All right, one sec. I shall roll. I'm just going to shoot hit, uh, shoot with Eldritch Blast from the back. Okay. Twenty, uh, non-natural. Yep, that's gonna hit. Yay! Add a ten and a seventeen. The seventeen will hit. The ten will not. All right, I want to use the chain and attempt to pull this thing closer to me. All right. I forget. Do I have to roll for that, or is that just a flavor thing? Um, you have to hit it. Oh, okay, okay. So seven. Uh, 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 I think it's piercing. Uh, do I get do I get sneak attack for this? Yes, you do, because he has me yes. right next to it. So five points. Well, four points of force damage, one of radiant, and nice. I'm definitely using my bonus action to mark this enemy as the source of my rage. Nice. So a total of four, uh, of, uh, 14 damage. Okay. Are you keeping that piercing damage? Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna try my new thing, <laughs> just because. Uh, let's see. That was a D6. Yep. I think if, if she does elemental, it's a D8. Yeah, it's it's a D8 for uh, piercing. It's, uh... It is, but it's, well, it's a D6 to roll for what kind of damage it's going to be. Oh, right, of course. Ah, that would be four. I need to look that up. Um... Let me see. That is force damage. Ah, nice. So seven uh, uh, piercing and seven force damage. All right. So, uh, Talon, what did you get on your attack roll? I got a 25. That's going to hit. <laughs> nice. So, um, I want you all to go into some descriptions here. Griff uh, and Rowan. What does your attack look like as Talon starts to spin his chain around? Uh, Griff just kind of steps like a little bit away from the wall and glances down at Bertram and then looks up at this thing and just kind of gets that stone look at his face. And then one from each palm, these red, uh, they kind of trail a tail like a comet does, these two red a bolt of energy just shoot out of each palm. One going, I guess, over his shoulder, hitting the wall, and the other one just hitting the back. And I just glance back down and put him again. Nice. So she she kind of takes a quick look down at Budrim also, because like I imagine they have to like pass where his corpse is. Looks up and is like super like ticked off at this thing, and is kind of unnerved by this whole huge shape-shifting thing, too, because that's like a... wasn't expecting that. Um, just pulls out her rapier and just kind of like, uh, like, well, I don't know if charge is a thing, but like, flavor-wise, she just kind of runs, kind of runs at it and like, takes a like, stab at the thing, and then she'll, um, um, just kind of uh, do the whole concentration thing, because magic is still new, and Mm-hmm. Just kind of does the whole, you know, hold out her hand and just kind of wonders what the heck is going to happen because all this stuff is still crazy and it's kind of half unexpected. So, mm-hmm. all right, Rowan, an explosion of force bursts out from your dagger just as the chain finds its way into the creature's chest. Talon, nice. you feel. As you notice the slack on the chain tighten, you see the creature getting pulled directly toward you. It's unable to resist it. Would I get an opportunity attack with a rapier here? 
You do not, do because not. it is not moving of its own will. It's okay. being forced to move. Okay. And she was using her rapier, not her magic dagger, just at the moment. Just gotcha, regular gotcha, weapon. sorry. If that matters any, I'm not sure, but... Uh, not really. <laughs> Alright, just wanted to clarify that, you know, just, just, just in case. Alright. So if so I have the uh, extra attack, do I only roll one rapier then? Since I mean rapier, God, I'm the same way else. One sickle then, since the one has a chain. So I don't think I set a limit on the chain. If that was a bonus action, I think that was just a standard action itself. So you still have a bonus action. And technically, that was an attack. So you still have um, your bonus attack. action for your offhand weapon and your standard attack left. Nice. So okay, this so... creature gets pulled 10 feet closer to you. So Talon looks down at Budrum's body. A look of pure rage crosses his face. I mean, if looks could kill this thing, it wouldn't even be a fight right now. And as the creature gets pulled towards him, Talon attempts to slash it in the throat with his other sickle. Um, uh, gets a 19. Uh, 19 is going to hit. Oh crap, I wasn't holding the button. Okay. Um, there you are. Yep. <laughs> uh, the damage is nine. Uh, does Is Slayer's Prey a bonus action, or how does that work? Slayer's Prey, I believe, is a bonus action. That's one where you mark it, right? Yeah, for the 1d6. Yes. So I believe that is a bonus action. Okay. I used bonus, right? So I can do that on the next turn. You actually used your two attacks, so you still have your bonus action. You can either attack okay. it one more time with your offhand, or you can uh, use your Slayer's Prey. Uh, I'll attack with the offhand. I'd rather do more damage. All right. Keep it all possible. <laughs> uh, 25. That's going to hit. And... Uh, damage is 10. All right. You reach up and you try to gouge it directly across the neck. The skin is pretty thick. You do draw blood, but it doesn't look as lethal as you wanted it to be. And as you uh, reach out again with your second sickle, you can slash it right across the chest. And I believe that is your turn, right? Yep. Cool. All right. From as the creature gets pulled away from in front of you, Yasmin, directly across from you, you see um, a very McDreamy-esque warlock standing on the opposite side of the room. (laughs) (laughs) And between the two of you, two circling orbs of light appear they are shifting colors and they are spinning around each other very quickly and I need everybody to make a deck save including big monster guy 17 
seven. Oh, I no. got nine. Twenty-three. Oh, no. Okay. Leander got nineteen. Nice. Mm-hmm. And what about Rowan? Yep, one sec. Twenty-five. Okay. Rob is double checking my saving throws. The two orbs of light spin faster and faster around each other, and you start to see arcs of electricity flying off of them. And in a matter of quick second, a burst of electricity flies in all directions. Tom and Griff, you're not able to react fast enough, and you take 18 points of lightning damage, while everybody Ow. else takes 9. Ow. Including big monster guy, because they're not very smart. Okay. And we move on to Leandra, Tom, and Yasmin. So it got pulled away. How far did it get pulled away? Ten feet. Okay. I'm going to... I think Yasmin's going to squint at the orbs of light and tilt her head a bit, then kind of sigh, uh, look towards the strange giant creature, and she's going to kind of... uh, mutter something under her breath and under common and kind of twist her hands almost like two of her fingers kind of moving in a circular pattern as she kind of draws symbols in it almost like she's painting an arcane room start to appear on it she kind of pushes it towards the creature as for her bonus action i'm gonna have her cast hex all right and then for my action she's going to prepare uh in one of each of her claws uh, try to paint uh, with one hand into the other almost like the way that someone might do uh, this is the analogy that comes to my head like they're kind of swirling an ice cream almost uh, like okay. a soft scone um, another green orb of light as she goes to throw two of them uh, at this thing for an Eldritch Blast okay go ahead and roll to the tap First hit is 25 to hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit. So that does, uh, let's see here, uh, nine force damage and one necrotic damage from Hex for the first right. hit. Second is 13 to hit. That's a miss. Yep. Okay, and she's going to... How far away... Where in the direction are the orbs of light compared to her? Compared to her? So if you are... If, if straight ahead of you was like 12 o'clock on a clock face, the mm-hmm. creature is kind of off around the 9 o'clock area, and the orbs of light okay. are more toward 2 o'clock. Okay. Is there any cover around 6 o'clock or that kind of range that she can get behind? Not really. You are standing against the wall still. So uh, you are kind of just stuck kind of out in the open, and there's not much cover in this place. To begin. Okay, is there anyone uh, in front of her, like, position-wise, or she's kind of isolated? You see uh, Griff, the dreamy warlock, on the opposite side of the room. Okay, and if I try to move towards Griff, would I have on top of opportunity in terms of, like, line of sight? You would not. would not. Okay, she's gonna try to move, basically, weave around to get behind Griff, kind of smirk a bit and say, hello <laughs> there, kind of wave two fingers, get behind him just to have a bit better view of the battlefield. <laughs> he just looks at you looking confused. Nice! <laughs> no, I didn't use Griff for cover. Griff uses other people for cover, not 
the other way around. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. exactly. There's something wrong with this. She's gonna have <laughs> to learn. <laughs> Alright, so Leandra, Tom. Um, Leandra will use her bonus action to cast a uh, flaming blade. Okay. And she will lift it high and she will say, uh, Strake, guide this blade so I can avenge your cleric. Nice. And whatever else might happen, uh, I don't know what Strake's colors are, but the blades, the, the flame around the blade will take on those hues. All right, gold and red. Nice. Gold and what? Red. Okay. And then she will use her regular action to attack with it. Okay. Now, I would like to say that, uh, you know, with all that, I should get a nice roll, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. I got a nine. I'll give you advantage Ow. because of the cool speech. I'll and because you... there's... Well, Yay. there is uh, there is history here. Like, Leandra has prayed to strike before now. Um, yep. And Leandra, I believe, still has the coin from the drum. So there is narrative oh. sense behind why this works. Still terrible. So she got okay. a 12. <laughs> All right. Well, there's no help in that. I know. <laughs> oh, man. That would have been so fine. awesome, though. Jeez. She, she mutters something that might be slightly disparaging of Strake. <laughs> 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 something about how you gods over there want us to come help you and save your asses. And uh, <laughs> yet you can't even lift a hand, right? The flames on your sword start to putter out. They come back at yeah. the last minute. But you'd better. And she like <laughs> smacks her sword. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm done. And apparently. Are you, are you staying right up on the creature? She will. Um, okay. This is this is her role in life. Gotcha. And Tom. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, was it possible to hear what Yasmin was muttering under her breath and under common? Um, I don't think it would be that hard. I guess it depends on how close it would be. And I think she would mutter an undercommon, uh, uh, be this, uh, a performance of grace in a world of brutes. So she's a poet and a painter. <laughs> yes. And a writer and a singer and a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's gonna stick his arrow in the, um, the, the glittery vial and then shoot it at the, the creature. Okay. Are you aiming at the big creature or one of the two small orbs? Oh, sorry, the big creature. Gotcha. That's 21. That's gonna hit. Do you want to describe how this works or do you want me to? Uh, Tom uh, gets up close to shoot his bow, probably uh, melee range, and mm -hmm. and as he's doing that, he's he dips the arrow in, in the little side pocket and uh, pulls it back and shoots. Okay. And I'm just gonna roll for damage. piercing damage okay the arrow as it hits plunges into the creature's skin and it breaks off as it gets a certain amount in the arrowhead is still inside of its body um, and the shaft falls directly in front of you but what you see is a burst of luminous smoke um, it comes out uh, I'll let you choose color here. It can either be blue, green, or purple. Let's do green. Green. Alright. So, this uh, smoke starts to plume out of the creature's wound. And it's at once luminous 
and uh, dull. It is quite odd <laughs> to see. Uh, and as the smoke gets about two feet away, it dissipates as if it was a vapor, so you can still see. It's not going to smoke you guys out, but it has created a target for you guys to aim at. And your attacks against this creature now have advantage. Nice. Yeah. Against the against the big one, right? Yes. Okay, just just checking. I was I, I was checking uh, something, and Jaws was yammering at me. So. Gotcha. Uh, Tom is also going to use. Uh, the, he's going to take out the Oswings. Al- Alchemist fire. Okay. And- uh, I know it's a throwing weapon, but can I just say he just like kind of smacks the, uh, or tries That's to smack fine. the only with it? Nice. Yeah. Uh, no. Is that dexterity? Uh, it's an improvised weapon, um, so. It's improvised. I'll let you either use dex or um, strength, whatever is better. You're right up close and personal. It's not going to be too hard for you to just reach out and shove a vial onto it. And... Okay, thanks. Uh, so that's 19, but I'm gonna roll again because I have advantage. Okay. Could get that natty. I'm gonna go with the 19. <laughs> All right. You now slam. Just... Oh, go ahead. I just want to know about the damage. Do I roll for that, or does he roll for that on his turn? So that is a once per turn. I'm going to let you roll for it. Um, your turn is right before his, so I'm just going to have you roll it on your turn just to save me from having to roll extra dice over here. <laughs> That's three fire damage. Cool. As you slam the vial directly onto this creature's... What are you slamming it onto? I'm going to say shoulder. Just... Okay. You have to jump to do that, but I'll let you do it just because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he is pretty tall. He's a uh, good eight feet tall. Whoa! Okay. Uh, then maybe just kind of right below the, the arm on the left side. Okay. As you slam it... You see the uh, viscous fluid kind of start to seep out and around, and it starts to drip down the creature's side. And as it's exposed to air, it bursts into flames, and you can see fire coming off of it. And we are back to the top of the round. First thing you guys notice is that some of the wounds that uh, Talon had created, particularly the one across the creature's neck, uh, starts to close very rapidly. Ah, no. <laughs> Yikes. Naturally. Uh huh. Right. It, it is going to raise its glaive and it will swing down and it's going to make a spinning attack. Oh, crap. So, uh, Talon, Leandra, Tom. <laughs> yeah. You guys are all within range right now. Uh-oh. And so I need you guys to make a dex save to try to avoid getting hit. How do I use my patches thing when I cast it now, or is that something I do when it's my turn? Um, you can use it now because it's a reaction, so you can use that on any turn. Um, yeah, so you can use it whenever. Okay. I rolled a two for Dex, Eric. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, these rolls have to catch up and get better soon. Uh-huh. <laughs> I rolled a 16. Okay. Um, I rolled a 14. Okay. 16, is that a plus two to your deck? Uh, 
yes. Because it gave an error, you put underscore, so it should be 18. Oh, uh, okay, thanks. No problem. Uh, okay, so then we have 18, 2, and 14. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually a 19 with the plus 5 added. Okay. Nice. So the... only Leandra fails, I'm guessing. Yes. Ow. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> she so, fails spectacularly. The creature uh places one leg out kind of in the direction between Leandra and Talon and it swings with a heavy blow downward and starts to spin with the glaive close-ish close, close -ish to the ground like you can jump over it um, it catches Leandra right at the leg and you take uh, 11 points of damage alright and yeah. you will and you are knocked prone as it trips you. Alrighty. Um, Tom, you are able to deftly jump up and over the thing. Talon, you can see this coming and it looks like it's going to hit you. As you decide to use your patch, do you want to describe what it looks like? Um, I haven't really given any thought yet, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Um, so I kind of like the idea that it, uh, as you reach down to touch it, it's almost like you're peeling off a sticker off of the, off of the patch itself, and it kind of dissolves in your fingers as you pull away, and uh, the pieces that are dissolving kind of float downward around your feet. And you are able to jump a little bit higher than you expected. Oh, okay. As it passes right beneath. It is going to see that it didn't hit the rest of you. Spot um, that it did hit Leandra. Yes. <laughs> oh, poor Leandra. That doesn't sound good. As no, the, no, she's as okay. The, All right. As the main aggressor of the group when it came to calling him <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. He steps forward and he's going to try to stomp on him. Ow. Hey. He lifts one of his hulking legs and because no. you are prone he has advantage. Oh no. Oh boy. Shit. Oh that's good because no. it was a nat one for the first that's one. That's good. I like that. And my two. Uh -huh. <laughs> um well it, it, the roll was a nineteen. Let me see what I add to that. It doesn't matter at that point you you hit. Yeah, no. What's your AC? Nancy. Thirteen Ooh. Wait, your AC is 13? Yikes. Yes. So smart. Uh, Eric needs to help with that at some point. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, I gave you a magical club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And, get and, a, plus and one a shield. An animal. I'll actually get a plus two because the shield becomes anyway, but yes. Oh my god. Yikes. The shield adds to my AC, but I need to change to that bear first. Uh-huh. And you can't see me do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. <sighs> so the creature brings its foot down upon you. Yeah. For nine points of damage. Okay. I have a plan. I, I need to <laughs> action eventually this round. So. And that is that creature's turn. So we're back at the top of the, of the uh, main party's round. So we have Rowan, Talon, and Griff. And Talon. Yay. Uh, I want to cast Hunter Sense. Okay. Uh, and I'm just gonna do another rapier bash. And whoever said last last round that my magic stuff did a D8, they were right. So I will remember that from now on. I should have rolled two D8s instead of two D6s. Um, oh yeah. But I will. I will. When roll you use for, magic, it's yep. a D8. Uh huh. I will roll for this. One second. Um. So, Jesse, do you have the text for? that yes i do okay so what does it provide to you again uh pulling it up 
because it was a bunch of stuff and I don't remember. <laughs> um, 25? 25 is gonna hit. And these all still have advantage, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot. All right. It says, uh, choose a creature within 60 feet of you. You automatically learn if the creature has any vulnerabilities, immunities, or resistances. Okay. I'll keep the 25. <laughs> so. Vulnerable to fire. And immune to cold. Yeah, I can only hit. No other resistances to speak of. Okay. And uh, you know this, and you can tell it to your party as a free action if you wish. <laughs> I uh, yell that out to the party. Right. So, um. <coughs> I, I just went ahead and rolled the 3d8 because I'm gonna do the magic thing. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll say the first d8 was for my um, my uh, rapier plus three, so that's 11 piercing. And then let's mm -hmm. see, I rolled an eight and a four for 12, but I'm gonna roll the d6 to see what what it turns out to be. So 11 yep. piercing and 12 something. Um, and let's see, it's well, let's see, it's. What was that? Immune to cold? Uh, Immune to cold and vulnerable to fire. To fire. Ooh, all right. Uh, I'm going to try this and hope <laughs> because I already rolled it. So, um. Uh, three is fire. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> so that would be twenty-four fire damage. If it's if it's uh, if if it's vulnerable, mm -hmm. it gets double, right? So, nice. Right. So twenty-four fire damage and uh, eleven piercing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, are they all a little bit closer toward the entrance where we came in? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to turn and look at this new elf behind me and say, um, my name is Griff, and uh, for the record, I'm not a coward. It's called Tactics. I'm going to turn, and I'm going to run <laughs> toward those glowing orbs, and when I get nine feet from them, I'm going to cast Thunderstep and just bamf like 40 feet out into the hallway. Where I can still <laughs> see them, but uh, way down the hall. <laughs> nice. Ready to make const a constitution saving throw. Okay, um, just for a flavor thing, when you turn around to look at Yasmin, you're saying this, and as you're turning away, out of the corner of your eye, you swear you can see a man standing behind her in a mask. It's a, a dark blue mask, but you can't quite see the details of it. Okay. And as you charge forward, constitution, you said? Correct. Let's see, I can't imagine these guys have great con. Uh, okay. Um, so that is a seven and a nine. Okay, that's a failure. It is lightning damage, I'm sure it's not going to be back for it. Uh huh. 3d10. So one thing to note about Thunderstep, he's not taking the uh, Yaz action. Well, that's not how it works. So she's not within five feet. And then this way. Nineteen lightning damage. I just in a super loud boom of thunder, and I just vanish. All right. As as you reappear in the hallway, behind the rest of everybody else, <laughs> um, and you look back, it does more damage to these creatures than you thought it was going to. You didn't expect it to hit him as bad, but it kind of would hit as much as you would normally expect. You see them kind of reeling from the hit as they 
spin upward. And I just kind of under my breath, I'm like, oh shit. Um, that's it for my turn. All right. Rowan, as you sink your rapier into this creature, right where Tom hit with the alchemist fire, your fire kind of fuels his fire in a way. Uh, and you do all of your extra damage. Nice. Um, and I forgot about that, so I'm adding an extra three points of damage from the alchemist fire earlier. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it can waste its action to try and get rid of the alchemist fire. It definitely can. It should too. <laughs> oh, otherwise it just <laughs> keeps taking. Otherwise it just keeps taking more damage. Awesome. Hey, it might. It might. You know, you guys might be in its lair. We'll see. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um. So Talon, was the hunter sense the only thing you could do on that turn? Use your it used your action, I believe. Uh, it says it's an action, so I would have. Yep. I would think so. Do you have a cantrip you can use as a bonus action or something like that? No, I don't have any cantrips. Rangers get no love. <laughs> So, uh, okay. Then we will move on. Unless you would like to move, uh, Talon. No, I'll stay, he'll stay where he is. Okay. The, um, creatures start their spin again. The two orbs. Their light changes to a deep green as they spin. And they start to separate as they get higher into the air and creating a, a larger uh, a diameter circle crossing over. Mostly. Griff, you're safe out in the hallway. <laughs> oh boy. Everybody else. Second verse, same as the first. Dex save. It's a good, it's a good thing because ah. I'm more than halfway dead already. <laughs> I've got like 12 hit points. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah, I'm squishy. 20, non natural. Nice. Big ol' five for me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Tom has the worst luck. I hit like two attacks last turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with failing the saving throw now and again. Oh jeez, nine. Okay. Uh, Leandra, Talon. Uh, it is my turn. She at twelve. Eighteen for Leandra. Okay. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. Leandra, you are able to duck beneath the creature in front of you, and use it as a meat shield. <laughs> I like that plan. I'm conserving a patch, and I think I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> and, uh, Yasmin, you are able to pull yourself closer to the wall to avoid being directly beneath these creatures as they start to drop acid onto them. Ah, no. Those of you who failed, which is everybody except for um, <laughs> Griff, Yasmin, and Leandra, you guys receive 11 points of acid damage. Ow. The creature, uh, the big creature fails as well? Yes, he does. And he is also taking that damage. As Talon gets hit with the acid, he just kind of stares down at the patches and shakes his head. <laughs> oh yeah, you do get to add that to your saving throws. And it does last until the end of your next turn. So if you added that, what would you have had? Uh, 17. Okay, you would have passed. So <laughs> you cuddle up next to Leandra 
beneath the creature. Okay. And you are able to avoid the damage. And I have three patches left. Hi there, nice seeing you. <laughs> so you only pulled off one so far? Um. Uh... Oh, well, oh no. To avoid You're the right. Attack. You're right. Um, so you only have to use another one once your turn passes. Uh, but you did your turn did come up again, so you you would have had to use the second one. So you still have three okay. left. Tower okay. to land. Or can't you turn to something bigger than this? Maybe. Give me a minute. <laughs> Too much to do. Break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As you guys step back into position. <laughs> yep. And. We come to uh, Yasmin and Leandra and Tom. Leandra's oh. determined to hit this guy with her sword, her flaming okay. sword. So we're gonna give that a try. Uh, she has to stand up first, so sort of. Ow. Mm -hmm. uh, and not you doing have too well. um, advantage as well. Okay. Does she get a sense that uh, a lot of people are hurt? Um, are you? I mean, yes, you could probably. Yeah, those tell. orbs alone have been kicking. Here, here's how. Here's how she's gonna reason it. She is pretty badly hurt, and she's usually the one who is like one of the last ones standing. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> she's gonna assume other people are. Okay. Um, she rolls uh, twenty-two to hit. That's gonna hit. Yes, it is. Alexa, roll 3d6. <laughs> when Nancy gives up on the dice rolling bot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, that stupid thing. It hates me. <laughs> um, so she uh, only did uh, 18, oh, sorry, 16 points of damage. Okay. That's um, after the doubling. It's fire. Okay, gotcha. And if she can, she will carve Strake's not carve really, but uh, Strake's holy symbol into this thing's stomach. Okay, interesting. Um, it'll it'll bla you know burn there. That's what. Nice. Yep. Uh, uh, please take inspiration. Ah, thank you. And then she's trying to decide between two things, but I think I'm going to go for casting healing spirit for the party. Okay. It's a bonus action. Mm hmm So she will do that. Nice. Um, and is and... it the standard hound, the chatterbox? Yes, Aww. it is chatterbox because that's she's really remorseful about what happened there. Mm hmm So So where uh, do you direct it first? Griff puts his hand in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Griff's a long ways away. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Is there some place I can land it that's going to put it close to a good number of people? I believe this thing can stand. Um, now, here's a question. Does everybody around it, or is it a, like, receive the healing, or is it creatures I of get to choice? choose. Okay. Yeah, I get to choose. Well, I believe it can move through spaces of other creatures, because it's oh, kind yeah. of okay. yeah. ethereal. Yeah. Yep. So you can place it right next to this big ogre guy, and and yeah, it'll so get one. Tom, Leandra, and Talon. Is okay. it run right there to stab in it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I forgot about Rowan. So, <laughs> um, I, always, I keep whoops. figuring Rowan is standing back far away. Typical um, the, fashion. Yeah, Those normally people. she is, but she just kind of ran up because she was so angry and like not. she just kind of charged up to it and started hacking at it. Go ahead, Those people who are nearby get one d6 at the basically when it comes your turn. Oh, nice! So. Nice. Because I'm down half my hit points, so yeah, I'm hurting pretty good. I'm okay still, but yep. yeah, ow. Does that include us or me? Because. Mm hmm. I... Yes, I would think. Yes. Tom, Talon, Rowan, Leandra. Okay. On your on your turn, you will receive one d six healing. Okay, and that'll be there for for the next minute. Every time you are, are within its range, you'll get one d six at the start of your turn. Awesome. 
now does that count as the start of this turn? Because we're kind of doing yes. this simultaneously. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, Eric said oh, yes. Oh, cool. All right. I am so glad because I needed it. That's good. That's six. Uh, for a bonus action, Tom will take, like, go down on one knee uh, and kind of catch his breath and do second wind. Okay. And then while he's down there, he is going to uh, shoot up at the, the uh, Oni and try and get him in the armpit. Okay. Well, I got two, I got two hit points. <laughs> You've got advantage still. So that's 25 to hit. That'll hit. And when the arrow hits, it kind of explodes with the necrotic snakes that wrap around and weaken him. Okay. And that does an additional 2d6, right? Um, for the, I mean, it's the necrotic. No, it doesn't. Okay, and on its next turn, it does. Oh, hang on, let me check this. Let's make a constitution save. Okay, on its next turn. Uh, no, right now it does. Okay. Just looking for a constitution. Ah, there it is. So it gets a 16 on its constitution save. It passes. Okay. And Yasmin, mm -hmm. your turn. Alrighty. Um, I think she's going to... How far is the healing spirit from her? Um, she's still, uh, at least a good ten feet away. Okay. Then, can she go further down this hall to get further away from those light orbs, or not really? She's a good um, still? Yeah, like, so the room that you're in is kind of a big circular room, mm -hmm. and the only hallway is the one that leads out. Okay. And how far away is that hallway at the moment? Uh, that hallway is past the battling creatures, or the creature oh, okay. and everybody else. And um, ah, okay. uh, you could get there in a turn. Mm. I think she's going to start off by Aldrich blasting the creature. Okay. How damaged does it look? Um, It is pretty bad off, it looks like. Everybody's ganging up on him, so... Okay. <laughs> First one's 12 to hit, that's a miss. Remember, you have advantage. Uh, that's with advantage. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Can I use this for now? Well, I already have advantage, so that double advantage is not a thing, so I'll roll for the second one. That's more like it, that's a 23 to hit. Yep. yep. For 13 fours, and let me just roll the necrotic. Okay. And for necrotic damage, and I think what she does, nice. she kind of weaves the first ball in, and it goes wide, hitting the wall behind him, and she kind of curses an undercommon a bit. She tries to almost kind of spin up the other ball with her other hand with a bit of frustration, and and she kind of looks nipped, and she's gonna, looks kind of like, 
backhand throw towards where the the wound where the uh alchemist fire went and arrow went to its body to kind of make it almost kind of bubble up in the stomach with the force as it's hitting it basically trying to get inside with the magic mm -hmm. and that does 13 force and four necrotic um and then for bonus action i think she's gonna um i think she's going to kind of point a finger at it and kind of sneer and say first creature of nets in these lands is so hostile despite its strange abilities how disappointing and she's gonna kind of like almost snap her fingers and she's gonna <laughs> use a discordant melody on it nice and that's a d6 i believe no it's a d8 sorry yes level five is d8 yeah that's six second damage nice so you use your slam poetry abilities and <laughs> <laughs> this creature looks really bad off at this point uh its face is starting to sag especially after the additional assault on its brain she's not gonna move she's gonna try to like stick to the wall though in case there's another area of effect attack pretty much so she's ready to kind of clamor around that ish okay let's see in the turn so we're back to the top of the order yay uh, let me do my uh, g6 ceiling real quick okay Oh, oh, sorry, not to. Uh, it's actually Oops. the sorry, monster. My bad. It's all good. Um, he is going to reach down, try to grab. Well, he's been targeting her so far. There's no reason to stop. <laughs> sorry, Leandra. Um, the alchemist fire is still burning for one. Oh damage. yeah, go ahead and roll that for me. Okay, two damage. <laughs> um, so Leandra. What? Does... Oh, sorry. Uh, this needs to be a strength contest. Oh, I might actually have a vague chance. So he's going to try to grapple you with one of his hands. Does he have advantage because of the size difference, or no? Um... Huh. Like, I can check, because I... I don't know. Keep in mind, the answer has inspiration. Yep. So what does that do? Let's me lo roll a extra, what, roll 1d4? 1d6. D6. Okay. D6 so you can add to any roll. Okay, never mind. It's just the grapple must be no more than one size larger than you. Yeah. It must be in your reach. She rolled a total with it. She did use her inspiration, and she rolled 21 total. Oh, Yay! No. Oh, yikes. <laughs> oh, no. Even that. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, he rolled an 18 and has a four strength. Plus four strength. Oh, I tried! You tried. I did. Could I react? And the inspiration and... die came up with six, by the way. So could I react and yes. die because it's an attack type to try to uh, be cutting words against him trying to grapple? Sure. Why not? Okay. She's gonna, as the grapple goes, I think she's gonna like. Almost kind of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, when he does the objection poke. Um, do that to him, and kind of, almost in a laugh, say, You think you can grab her? So foolish of you. And she's kind of like, kind of has a slight flourish, as almost like a sound wave, kind of, almost like a slap of sound. Hits oh, it. nice. Because I don't get the other reference, so, yay. 
So it Jessica takes doesn't play uh, video games. six less on that F, uh, grapple. Cool. <laughs> nice. Yes! It, it reaches out a hand very quickly, and as the sound wave smacks it, the hand goes wide and it grabs nothing. <laughs> and Leandra, as acting 12 years old, like, missed me, missed me. Uh-huh. It gets angry. <laughs> oh. Naturally. Of course. Takes its hand from right next to you where it reached initially and will make its claw attack instead. Okay. And we'll see. Oh, uh does does a nine hit um no it's gonna no miss. amazingly no <laughs> it swings goes right over your head and she's like hey batter batter never mind no no that's the wrong reference um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think you wanted to swing at you yeah um but she'll just sort of wave cheerfully at it with her flaming blade the last of its movement, it's going to try to run. <laughs> it's going to know. start running toward Griff. <laughs> we'll see if it's Griff's in the hallway. Do any of us get attacks of opportunity? You guys yeah. do. So, uh, four attacks of opportunity. Oh, you foolish, foolish creature. <laughs> so, um... It, so. Oops. There's that. What's 18. That? Uh, I want your bonus action disengage so I can back up and have range to firebolt him. In oh, it's yeah, still somewhere. it's still on his turn right now. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah you guys get uh, opportunity attacks. Do they right. have advantage oh. as well? So I can't. They do. Okay. They do have advantage. All right, I'm just um, rapier it then, I guess, because um, I I can't move when it's not my turn. I guess like is that, is that the thing? Right, your opportunity attacks is a reaction, so uh, you don't actually get an action or bonus action or anything. You only have your reaction right now, and you can only make a melee right. attack. Yeah. All right, I'll just uh, I'll just slash it with slash it wow. with Rabier then. Okay. Does a thirteen hit? Thirteen does not hit. The eighteen that Leandra did uh, does hit. Thirteen or twenty six if it's it's fire damage. So twenty six if that's doubled. Oh jeez. Okay. <laughs> nope, miss eight. Um, Talon, you also get uh, one attack on this guy. Uh, okay. Sira, you have advantage, I think, for your opportunity attack. Oh, yes, you guys do have advantage because of the essentially the fairy fire that Tom used. Uh, it was a 28 to hit, it was a nat 20, if that mattered. That does matter, you get double damage. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Poor guy. He's gonna die probably. Nope. Uh, 13 will still miss, right? 13 misses. Darn it. Oh well, why try? Um, a le- no, can't add. 12 damage. <laughs> Okay. So I can imagine she probably just gets distracted by all this fire kind of spray at, but kind of gets gets misses, even though this huge thing is right in front of her. So yeah, that's mm-hmm. a thing. I just want to yell out "Yoga Fire" whenever anybody talks about a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, Leandra's sword slashes across the back of the creature's legs when it's trying to run. Talon leaps up with his sickle and drives it directly into the back of the creature, bringing it down to its knees. Yes! This guy's on his last leg. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Yeah, I was going to say, literally. <laughs> and it is now uh, Rowan, Griff, and Talon. I'm casting Bonfire. Yay! Bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Net. Now I can do what I was going to do earlier, which is bonus action disengage, so I can like back up and do firebolts because fire is like super effective on this thing. Mm-hmm. Now I want. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just want to clarify: is that firebolt or fireball? 
<laughs> that would be Firebolt. I do not have Firebolt <laughs> yet. I will have it eventually, That's very but... good. <laughs> That's very good, because that would hurt. No, please oh, do it. Oh, right, because because, because everyone's around. Everyone's I around. Think, her. I, think, her. I think Fireball's a great option. <laughs> Oh, he needs to make a deck save for Fireball or Fire Bonfire. Oh uh, yeah, I think a twenty-five mm-hmm. will hit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think Fireball's a fun option. I know, right? But so he <laughs> takes two d ten. That's a ten on the deck save. All right, that's a failure. Uh huh. Talon, what are you doing for your turn? Uh, I am going to try and attack him with three sickle attacks. Uh, two to the stomach nice. and one to the knees. Okay. So, so he, uh, takes 30, he, he takes 30 fire damage. That's after mm-hmm. doubling. Good lord. Mm-hmm. He got 10 from me and that's already doubled. Mm-hmm. Yes. The bonfire looks way cooler than it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> I approve of the bonfire though. That's awesome. Nice. What what are your attacks, uh, Talon? Uh, twenty. Mhm. Uh, twenty six and <laughs> sixteen. All right. Yeah, all those are gonna hit. So. Ow. I would like <laughs> Griff to. Give me an idea of what your bonfire looks like as it starts to engulf the creature. Um, so I imagine Griff like puts his puts a we'll say a fist out in the ground in a five foot little space right below him, just starts to turn red. And then he flips his palm up and then like lifts it up toward like the ceiling, and then this burst of flame just erupts out of the ground. Nice. Awesome. As the geyser of flame lowers again, Talon lunges in with his sickles and go ahead and describe how you are slashing or stabbing him. Okay, um, I slash into the strike symbol that Leandra carved on his stomach, kind of making it a bit jagged with two of the sickles, Mm -hmm. and the third one I kind of do a deep gash over his kneecap. Okay. And Rowan, um, do you want to describe your fireball as it deals the final blow? Just just huge blast of fire, like not fireball, but like, you know, like a, uh, I don't know, English. Um, Cause, Cause, that's a lot of fire damage. Um, it just she might like take aim over where like Tom's um, fire thing kind of ends at, and just kind of like like um, does a hand lift thing, like trying to make it go up up higher to do like more more injury to it, because they mm-hmm. know that it's like super, you know, it, it 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 doesn't like it, so just trying to like increase the range, I guess. Nice. The creature falls and it shrinks back down to the size of a man laying with the majority of its flesh burned away you can see bones oh and I want to do the 32 yeah. points of damage I rolled <laughs> Whoa. technically you did <laughs> yeah you just took a shit out Damn. of it Tom is going to collect some of the ashes and uh, charred bone and stuff like that. So, of course he is. Unfortunately, to point at the orbs. Yeah, Tom. you guys are still in combat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I kind of forgot about those. The orbs separate. It is now their turn. Ow. One of them starts to glow a light blue while the other glows a deep red. And the light blue one is going directly toward Rowan. Nah. And the red one goes directly toward Talon. Uh-oh. 
if you bonfire. fire. <laughs> the feedback, right? So, both of you, please make a dex save. Uh, 17. Okay. 16. Nice. You guys both passed. Yay. As these balls start to rocket in your direction, you're both able to duck as they pass right over you and crash into the walls behind you. Nice. Rowan, you feel frigid air uh, and hear the sound of shattering ice as the, as the orb hits the wall. And Talon, you can feel heat and can smell smoke as the ball hits behind you. Oops. I forgot to take my D6 healing. I'm um, assuming that's still a thing. It is. Talon wouldn't say this is out of character, but with the fire, I have to say toasty. Reading? I think um, it's time to make s'mores. <laughs> if anybody gets the Mortal Kombat reference. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Um, and we are now on to everybody else. <laughs> Leandra, Tom, and mm-hmm. Yasmin. So I'm going to use my bonus action to move the hex. Can I tell if either of the orbs are more damaged than the other? Or is it about the same? You cannot. I don't think either of them have even taken damage at this point. Okay. So I'm going to go for the red orb and then attack with the Eldritch Blast. Okay. Uh, it's no longer advantage, correct? Right. right. Nineteen to hit. Does that hit? That, that that hits. So that's gonna be nine force and one necrotic for the first hit. Okay. Does twelve hit? It does not. Um, I'm gonna use insp. I think I'll save inspiration actually. Uh, and mm-hmm. then. For bonus action, I think she's going to... For this one, she's going to basically kind of chuckle as she sees the corpse fall. And almost with a weird instinct, she kind of crooks one arm uh, with a, a, a violin appearing like in her in one hand. She almost kind of starts to play a slight, almost kind of a funeral melody, but a bit too fast, so it seems a bit comedic. Um, as that forms kind of a, a stream of this green energy that fires uh, the first bolt with the second one missing on the red orb, and she's going to also uh, just go and melody with that. Mm-hmm. That's three psychic damage. Okay. When you uh, hit... And that's uh, extra D6. Is that relevant or no? With the hex? Uh, uh, not right now, it's not. <laughs> because as you hit with the initial uh, blast, you notice the light around the orb starts to flicker. And as you hit it with the second blast of the discordant melody, it winks out completely. She's going to nod to herself. Um, in terms of movement, is the hall, how far is the hallway where the griff was? Um, it is probably around 20 feet from you right now. Okay. And the other orb is where griff is now? The other yeah. orb is over by Rowan. Okay. And that is just off um, from where you're standing. That's about uh, maybe four o'clock from where you are. Okay, so she's going to try to move basically 20 feet to get behind a wall that's perpendicular, I want to say, uh, okay. so that it can't get a, a good direct line of sight on her without moving a lot. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to end my turn there. Okay. Leandra? Tom? Uh, go ahead, Tom. Uh, like I said, Tom's gonna scoop 
uh, for an action, he's gonna <laughs> go down and, and try and scoop up some of the ashes and charge, charge bone. Okay. And then he's gonna realize there's still orbs left, and he's gonna use an action surge to stand up and shoot an arrow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Sorry, I meant to do plus seven, so that's actually twenty-one. That's that's gonna hit. Uh, what kind of orbs do they look like? Um, what do you mean? Like, are, are they just balls of energy, or do they look like they're like glass orbs with some substance? <laughs> no, they just look like balls of energy, essentially. Eleven damage. Yes, piercing damage. Okay. And I'm going to try throwing uh, my last flask of alchemist fire at it. Uh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. As the arrow hits, you're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, arrow passes uh, into the creature and out the opposite end, and as it passes through the energy ball kind of explodes outward into sparks that bounce along nice. the ground and immediately wink out. <laughs> Do you still want me to mark off the alchemist fire? No. Yeah. Leandra will kneel and take a look for things that didn't burn. Maybe there'll be something interesting. Mm -hmm. I will I will also would also like to help with that. Just kind of look, see if there's anything useful slash interesting slash and, I don't know and she will keep the healing spirit nearby as she looks oh yeah, yeah awesome so right, that people uh, can... just to clarify we're out of combat now correct yes okay then Yasmin's gonna go towards the healing spirit and she's gonna offer a smile to Griff and say uh, Yasmin and she kind of bows gracefully <laughs> oh, honey. pleasure Ooh. Uh, after combat is done and, and uh, Tom's collected some of the the ashes uh, he's gonna go over to Budrum and start uh, he's gonna use one of the uses on his healer's kit and is Tinker's tools and kind of start of start um, sewing them up. Okay. I'm gonna call Atticus in from outside. Mm hmm And kind of look over Yasmin and say this um bit of a strange circumstance here, but um, we appreciate the help. That one over there was uh, one of ours. Then kind of nod toward the room. She knows an understanding. Tom will then say, oh, Leandra, how long do you think it'll take? How long what, sorry? Oh, for you to heal Butram. I, I... She looks down at him. I can't. Butram is missing both legs and both arms. Is it deep? Yeah. Oh, I think I can do. But he kind of... He do a lot. Can't you, like, heal him? No. I think no. she. I can hear this, right? Or is she at the entrance too far? No, you can hear this. I think she kind of blinks and kind of sighs, shakes her head. Well, I suppose this was a bit of a strange first encounter, yes. Then she's gonna look to Griff and. I think fold her arms, arms a bit casually. Did uh, Taya. She sent you here as well? Um, no, I actually have no idea who that is. The god of luck. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I was gonna say, wait, yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, no, we kind of do, actually. She kind of gave us stuff. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Hey, I was distracted. I, I have, okay, so here's the thing. When we talked to her, I got distracted thinking about trying to be on that pantheon, and I forgot her name. 
<laughs> she kind of, her eyebrows go up. Really? Well, aren't you ambitious Griffin, now, honestly. aren't you? <laughs> I just, you know, humble beginnings. I've got ideas. Yes, indeed, but have so, you not heard of the legends of those who have fell, be it to corruption, be it to perhaps the fears of humanity, to such attempts, and given the potential task at hand, the ascent to godhood would not be possible if the, unless the gods wanted it, and that you would still be their plaything, and there are much bigger things to worry of. Though, she kind of chuckles a bit. Such is wonderful to know that someone is thinking ahead, but <laughs> perhaps bringing me up to speed may be a better goal, yes? Hmm? She kind of offers him a smile. Yeah, and, and right now Atticus, who's a little, like, foot-long pseudo-dragon lands on his shoulder, says, yeah, I think, uh, we probably have a lot of talking to do, actually. Indeed, indeed. And like how she kind of looks at the Steel Dragon, friend of yours? Yeah, he, uh, he's the one that keeps me grounded, actually. Good to have, good to have. Oh, she kind of looks him up and down. Uh, what is he wearing? Uh, right now he's in, mm, uh, just his studded leather armor, just kind of your standard traveling uh, kind of gear, super dark brown, but he's got like sandy brown, kind of wavy hair, green eyes, uh, half elf. I don't think I've mentioned that ever. Like five, <laughs> okay. ten. <laughs> kind of important detail there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I think she's gonna like almost think for a moment and uh, ask him, mask where you're from. Seem a bit. Well, quite an interesting one, I'll say the least. And that yeah. does not seem there are others of... She kind of searches for the right word. High birth, I suppose, might be the right word. She Ooh, gives no. kind of a shrug. No, not me. I am uh, a bit of a wanderer, I guess you could say. One of those that are uh, kind of looking to find their way, I guess. This ran, many are. Yes. Ran into this lot, and here we are. And you seem to have blasts as I do. She kind of pauses for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, the old Elders Blast is kind of my go-to. Sometimes I bring out the, the bonfires just for fun. It's not that great, but it looks neat. Indeed, and sometimes one needs to intimidate a foe and nothing more like burning a flash to exactly. work with that. Ah, uh, yes. Sure, we'll get quite well together. It's always hard to perform. So I have a question for you, um, Eric. Can I try to use yes. Diplomat? I'm curious how that's gonna go. I wanna see what I can... Hmm. I don't know what that is. No, you can't. You can try, <laughs> but being okay. a half-elf, he does have advantage. It's not a saving throw. It's not? Is it it's literally just... It's an insight roll. It's an insight roll. Gotcha. So you, you're going to have to make an insight roll, uh, Griff, and I'm going to make a persuasion roll. And how this works is that if I've talked to you for one minute and I succeed against your check, you are charmed with whenever you're in 60 feet of me and for one minute after. Whoa! Oh, great. All right. I got this. Um, and, but it does it's not, it's they're not fun. aware of it. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Inside. Charmed, not controlled, so. Yes, persuasion is and is never mind control. Wow. I think it's fun to see what shenanigans can happen. Ooh, we got a 14, so how do we resolve that tie? Well, Did hold on, that's I intelligence, know. right? Uh, insight, insight is, is wisdom. 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 Yep. Let me double check, double check, double check. <laughs> You get a plus 10 to persuasion? Yep, ec uh, expertise. Nice! Well, that's wow. pretty cool. Bard problems. Uh-huh. That would be a 15, I have a plus 1. Okay, cool. So then that initially does not work then. Is that right? Yeah. Is that right? But so... there's, I don't think it's awareness, but it's more like... No, but uh, for the flavor's sake, Griff, sure. you hear in your mind, Oh, I like her. 
Griff just kind of grins. Mm, seems like plenty of schemes. I like this. Mysteries. I like it. And Atticus settles on your shoulder and stares into your eyes for a minute and then breaks eye contact. Okay. I kind of scratch him under the chin. And I'm going to walk over toward Budrum and everybody else over there. And I think she'll follow after giving herself a bit of a dust off. Pissing off the vial okay. in a bit, putting it back, back in its case. Oh. Leandra uh, turns back to Tom because they were talking and he can see that she's on the verge of tears. She says, Tom, I can't do anything for him. Not even my god. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry I asked. I, yeah, it's my fault. Why did we all leave him here to with that guy alone? I mean, we just assumed that he was harmless because his leg was injured. Because we thought he was telling us the truth. And like you said, we looked at him and he, he, he was injured. And why would he lie? Except, of course, he did. Uh, Ray, we might want to be more careful and less trusting of people from now on. Because we don't want something like this to be happening to any one of us. Because, yeah, that, I mean, I don't know that we could have done something, but... I just, just all of us r running off. I mean, he seemed fine, but I mean, we really didn't know anything about this so-called person. I mean, and she's just, she's just feeling really badly about the whole thing because they basically left him by himself, and then, and then, and then this whole thing happened. So, yep. You, you guys didn't leave him alone. You left him with me, and then I left him alone. I thought he was going to follow. You didn't know any better than any of us. The only one to blame, she'll point to the pyre. That's the only one to blame. And then you only saw the DM sitting there. <laughs> I feel personally attacked. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> it's not the DM's fault. Jim decided to leave. No, it's it, not. Yeah, that's the truth. It's really Jim's fault, sort of. But... <laughs> yeah, it's all his fault if he's listening to this. <laughs> Sorry, go on. We still like you, Jim. You're awesome. <laughs> Love you, Jim. <laughs> Love you, Jim. <laughs> Talon feels like jumping off the cliff at this moment, but I don't have any hit points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would not end well for you. No. Luckily... I think for him, he doesn't think for himself. Yeah. All um, right. Yeah. How many? How many more d sixes do we have? Probably. Um, I think it's we we had like two rounds, so right. Probably and it eight lasts more. for a full minute, so eight more. Yeah, and she'll bring it over to oh, hover oh, over Boudram oh, as though it could do any good, but. Aww. And since Atticus is nearby, I don't have to roll them. I just get the max, so I'm top dog. Nice. nice. Okay, so I'm not topped off. Just rolled 76. Yeah, I'm going to go... Nice. I'm going to go to the... Actually, I'm going to cover him with like a spare cloak. And wow. then uh, walk out the cave, kind of glance around, make sure there's nothing else out there. Then we'll start digging. Okay. Do we want to bury else. him right now? Now I roll a bunch of sixes. Wow. <laughs> what did you say, Talon? Um, he just said, "Do we want to bury him right in this place?" I mean, we're more than a day from Okot. You're going to carry him back all that way. I can do it. All right. She kind of watches this almost like with a slight distant look. Um, and she kind of just blinks slowly. Just watching you all interact about <laughs> this body. 
Oh yeah, and one of the at one point when Griffin walks by, I said, "Oh, yeah, and by the way, um, there's assassins trying to murder us. So before you get too cozy with this lot, come on and you know say <laughs> that." Why did you piss off assassins, if I may ask? I wasn't I'm... told of this complication. Um, how did that happen? Some of them were children. My intelligence is eight, so I didn't do a lot of things. But... I totally forget why it happened. I just yeah, happened. Oh, my so damn, I, I need to refresh that my memory. I would right. say, but I don't remember why. <laughs> you guys were attacked by a group of assassins outside of Oakart as you were initially headed yep. that way. You found, you um, charmed one of them. Yes, and then Boudrum and... broke it. Boudrum broke it by trying to kill her. And uh-huh. everyone's going to point out that I murdered a child. Of course. Well, yes. well, well, it happened. So and threw it to the bear, <laughs> threw the head to the bear. Yes, you yes. did. Um, <laughs> so it was a group of assassins. Two of them were children wielding daggers, uh, and well, one of them had like a glove with daggers sticking out of it, like a claw almost. Um, and then there were two barbarian esque creatures and a druid. And the party definitely got rid of everyone minus one child who they charmed and she revealed to them that she was part of an assassin group called the eyes of the night and that they had received a contract to kill everybody involved or else die the eyes of the what sorry the eyes of the night yeah that broke up on your end Ah. okay and y'all are telling yasmin this I, yeah, I'm not. Uh-huh. Well, oh, so, 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 wait a so, minute! Didn't well, we just I learn guess. something? <laughs> we just trusted yeah, some. I can. I can imagine. Wasn't Leandra and then Rowan kind of busy searching, searching for stuff? So I can imagine they're pretty sidetracked doing that, kind of listening and. Well, then we, uh, kinda... we we all gathered. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> we all gathered around Boudrum at that point, and it's like, how are we telling this person? We don't know anything about her. Yeah, so it's more curious if, if she's being told or not, just to clarify. Well, that yeah, that's my question, too. Right. So certainly, Lorraine does not. I'm keeping quiet because, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of dealing with, with stuff. I was saying most of the well, little that I said out of character. Yeah. But yeah, uh, probably Griff are said less intelligent were, folks. I think Griff Wolf mentioned them being hunted by assassins. Yep, right, Griff's, yeah, Griff did spill the beans. So, yep. oh, yeah. as Yasmin says, um, why did you piss off assassins? It's up to you at this point, too. What, when, what, what would Griff do? Would he continue on without even thinking about it? Or would he stop and look around and read the room for a minute? Or <laughs> he'd Well, Griff would probably stop and kind of think for a minute. And say, so, you know, honestly... I don't even know. We just, like, we keep stumbling, like, things like this, and he kind of gestures at that burnt corpse on the ground. It's like, this this shit just keeps happening, and I don't know, people don't apparently like it, and I mean, we just walk into Okot, and a bunch of people jumped out of trees trying to kill us, and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on myself. Well, I suppose, given the threat that we have to take down there might be splinter groups or other such or perhaps if gods get involved there might be agents of sorts so some a lot of it may be out of our control i suppose yeah i have i have no idea i just thought it was fair one considering what we're doing right now well the one is appreciated i suppose my question would be what are we to do now i just arrived here and i'm afraid i'm not entirely sure where we must go from here and sentiment for the body is sentiment as it is, but the longer we take, the further away our target may be, does... if they even are alive. Does Leander keep hearing this we? Mm-hmm. She <laughs> looks at the woman. Why do you assume you're with us? Well, that's because of what the god of luck said. She, they wish for me to join you, and so here I am. She didn't mention that to us. Exactly. And I gotta tell you, after recent events, uh, why would I believe you when the last person we believed killed our friend? 
I think we need a little bit of proof. We're not. Why are we going to take your word for it, even though you did help us? I appreciate the help. She kind of nods a bit. So here's a. Does she have proof from? Just trying to think. Does she have anything in particular for that? Uh, yeah, Griff. Griff is pretty pretty sure, but he doesn't have a way of saying that like comfortably. So he's not going to say anything. He's just going to whistle and kind of walk off. You can provide to them the details of what their current mission is, mm-hmm. as uh, she will, that's, that's something, something only they would know. Yeah, then I think she she will to say that, well, in terms of details of the mission, we were tasked to do with the Court of the Oblivion, which is looking to release, I believe it's the Oblivion, the Great Oblivion, within two years, and God of Luck test. All of you, with some of you not listening, are asking why in particular she, uh, they could not do anything about it. And after we, the two of us talked for a bit, I was sent over here. Well, time would have passed since when we met and when I arrived over here. What did she take from you? I know what she took from the rest of us. What did she take from you? Did she take anything, Eric? I am trying to figure out what Nancy's getting at. I, I, I think I think I know, but yeah. Um. <laughs> um, are we in need of a deception roll right now? Not for me. I'm she's, trying to think. She's of sincerely what... asking. What did she take? Yeah, we might need to explain to Eric because I yeah, because I'm think, a little I lost think, now. I think I know your right track, Nancy. Can I? Can I? Can I guess and see what it is? Sure. I believe she's talking about she took a whole year of time from us. So you know, gotcha. you know, stuck in... yes, gotcha. Yes, she did. Yay. So no, there's no deception. Leander's being dead serious. I mean, she mm-hmm. said that time had passed, but sure. Well. She did yes, not she take did anything physical, but once again, it was a year since I met her, and then a year before I came back. So a year of time has passed. I'd say, I'd say so. I'd say time is pretty physical, in fact. I mean, because once time is yeah. gone, I mean, you're not going to get it back ever. So, I mean, I it agree. seems pretty physical to me. Indeed. I lost a year of my son's life. So I would say Aww. it's pretty physical. I lost a year without my cat. <laughs> Fuck that that it was the poopy years. So <laughs> that is true. Hey, Griff's outside digging for the record. Yeah. Okay. And I think she would. Uh, she would not ask, "Is that not, is that proof enough?" Well, Andrew will incline her head. She seems a little dissatisfied, but yeah. I didn't trust his own as it always is, and wish we could have met under better circumstances, of course. She kind of, I think, runs a claw through her hair just to get it away from her eyes. I suppose, do you know where down the trail we are to go next? Or are we at a dead end at this moment? to find the cat. Yeah, the uh, way, the yeah. witch cat. The, the magic cat lady. And I got the impression she was around here. Mm-hmm. Was there nothing with all those bot- bodies down? I guess Griff has to come back to ask questions. Never mind. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he can come back. I, I... Lander likes Griff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, he comes back with his dagger all dirty. He's like, does anybody have a shovel? I don't, it's not working. Oh my god, digging with a dagger. <laughs> oh, no. no, you can't well, dig with a dagger. I mean, I thought I'd like, chop it up, make it soft. Break your blade, you rush. Don't be ruining your got, blade that way. I've got two, and I suck with these anyway. <laughs> Tom is also going to Just kind of rolls her eyes like, um, okay. <laughs> like, wow. I think she kind of like gives her for a, like gives Griffin an expressionless face and kind of scoffs at it. So uncivilized. Goodness, goodness. The, what, can... I, I'm trying to dig a grave out there. I don't know. What, I don't oh. have anything else to use. Well, if we were to have a lead, we can carry it with us, or perhaps 
it may go to the wolves unless we can dig faster. It might take a few hours. And what do we mean lose, lose with those hours in our search, let alone distance, depending on... Well, given that who we're looking for is not here, unless we have leads, then we'll be running with chickens with our off. So the faster we find leads, the faster we'll be on a better trail. So I suggest either we carry the body, put it in some kind of bag, uh, and continue our search. Tom is going to use uh, Tinker's tools to modify his tent into a kind of a sledge. Ah, okay, cool. Go on. Nice. And then Griff asks, "Is there was there nothing with the rest of those bodies down the hill then?" There was no cat. If that's what we're looking for. There's lots I've of got, dead bodies. I have no clue where we're supposed to go. I don't either. Well, we can start by searching this place. Maybe there'll be a clue here somewhere. Yeah. And uh, by the way, uh, I'm Rowan. She kind of holds out her, her hand to the to the well, new person, I who I don't think we've officially been introduced to yet. But Yasmin, she kind of bows and with a claw, kind of. Uh, it's kind of like almost like a bit of a teeth and claw, but a bit more fine, I guess. Kind of like long nails almost, but it's more of her hand uh, shakes uh, Ron's hand. She kind of glances at the whole cloth thing, kind of a bit nervous, but she'll shake, but it is kind of odd and like, um... She's just acting like it's totally normal. Uh-huh, She's like, I know, right? I'm like, um... Do you want to describe your character, Jessica? Yeah, I was just gonna ask if we if we if we blah, if we wanted to do that English, um, I can do that. Um, so she's about five two ish, uh, pretty thin. I'd say like one ten, one fifteen ish. Uh, red hair. Used to be fairly short, but it's growing out a little bit now. Um, um, Let's see. Um, she's got uh, studded leather armor, a couple of daggers, uh, rapier, and her short bow. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to describe her um, abilities, kind of, with that uh, mechanics. Um, she's, uh, I guess you'd call it striking looking. You know, with the whole red hair. She's got, like, green eyes, got gold flecks in them. People mm-hmm. would probably take more than one look at her, like passing them. Um, she's um, hmm, let's see. Uh, you guys probably saw her dex early, uh, uh, dex skills earlier. So she's kind of you mm-hmm. know fast moving and such. Um, uh, might be pretty much what you can tell physically, probably. Cool. And is that a half elf or a human? Sorry. Yes. Uh, half elf. My bad. bad. Cool. Sorry. No problem. So the whole pointed ears thing. Mm-hmm. Cool. Anybody else want to introduce a character, or do we want to continue on? Uh, I can do it. <clears throat> um, Talon is a half elf. He's about six foot one. He's not overly bulky he's muscular kind of like a athletic build i'd say um he has the pointed ears he has short dark hair and piercing blue eyes he has your basic traveler's outfit he has leather armor but it's nothing special um he has two sickles and a bow on his back and that's about it. Cool. Uh, Tom is very tall. He's he was kind of like an average looking guy, but stretched out a lot. So he's got some muscles, but they're they're kind of stretched over long, lanky arms, and um, his face is kind of narrow and and, and long in a way. Uh, he has a breastplate that's uh, kind of uh, Greek in design. It, it has like the, the muscles 
and very pointy nipples on it. And <laughs> carrying a lot of um, just lots of everything. Like he's got a hunter's trap, he's got a warhammer, he's got uh, pouches and various bits and odds and ends that he's collected. And he has a, a bow and a quiver that's sort of slung over one shoulder in such a way that he can, he can grab it at it easily, like grab it at little poaches on it easily. Mm-hmm. He specifically he's hunted for armor with nipples. <laughs> yeah, that was by that. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Leandra is human. She's about five. Um, muscular, I guess, for for her size. And uh, she's wearing leather armor. But like Jesse said, it's nothing to write home about. She Normally, she doesn't use her flame blade. She's got a club and a shield. And, and so that's what you see her with now. And the club is fanged, like with wolf's fangs. And the shield is, well, now they're covered with vines. Um, mm-hmm. So that's kind of cool too, and um, she's um, she doesn't seem to carry any missile weapons, um, and um, you might notice as she moves around and does things that she's missing a finger on her left hand, the pinky, mm-hmm. in fact. Um, and she, uh, I say that charisma was her dump stats. She's not unattractive so much as she tends to be uh, gruff and abrasive. Mm-hmm. A, bit, a bit more unfriendly than than other people, mm-hmm. but uh, she's uh, uh, so that, that's what she got. Cool. And I think that she would introduce herself with handshakes if they wanted, but mostly she's just gonna kind of bow gracefully to each of them. And I guess she'll take a slow breath and um, look around the cave. Is and the only entrance that she can see at the moment is the one that leads out. The only. Other than that, is it empty, or is there a further way deeper in? Nope, that is it. Um, Leandra, as Yasmin bows, you recognize the grace behind the bow, as it's been very practiced. And it takes you back to when you were a child, and your various stepmothers, (laughs) I think you just said yes, was uh, running you through drills to make sure you got it exactly right. It'll make her smile slightly, and, and she will be one to offer to Yasmin. Sorry, you cut out there. She'll be one of those who offers her hand to Yasmin. It makes her smile a bit to see that, that poise. And I think she she'll, where that comes from. she'll extend the claw and kind of shake her, shake her, offer her yep, some yep. handshake. Um, Eric, does, does Lander recognize what Yasmin is? Um, yes, you would recognize. Um, and drow are, are pretty typical in the world. So okay. everybody so. has the opportunity to recognize them. And uh, do they have the terrible reputation that I am used to in other... Uh... No. The nope. drow are not all evil here. Okay. Good to know. Yep, good to mm-hmm. know. So, Leandra, with your passive perception of a whopping, what is it now, 19? 19. Yikes. Nice. Did you take observant? <laughs> I did. Yes. Nice. <laughs> you I, spot. I <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I just said I did it at that first level human when I could take it. A... Uh, extra feet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You spot over in the pyre. A little bit of movement. As I feel sorry for whatever it is, she'll go flying over there. <laughs> if that's then... a baby, yeah, <laughs> you, you find another baby. No, that was um, so. <laughs> I might have to hurt you, Eric. <laughs> I know, right? Well, what can I say? I mean, like right before you guys disappeared, you made a deal that you would, you know, give your baby away to the eyes of the night to get the head off of you and you didn't show up so what do you think they did? <gasps> oh yeah, no I know <laughs> I, know. I, I forgot was that, that was a possible set oh yikes oh I had not forgotten she is so <laughs> bent that we'll goddess see. owes her 
we'll see what happens. But anyways, <sighs> the movement you see is the arm of the man who is laying there. You see his arm is moving as if trying to claw his way forward. <laughs> Should we cut it off? She goes and stomps on it like he stomped on her. Uh, ask it questions. Why won't you just die? Wait, Wait that's probably not the question. To die. <laughs> 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 not that question. I'm oh, sorry. Um, where is the cat? Where is the cat? Is that really what you want to go with? With six people around you who would like to kill you? Is Yesman that... hears this, right? Mm-hmm. Um... Can I try to talk to... Uh, do the, the thing, Rick? Yeah. yeah. Okay, she's gonna, like, focus on the arm. And... I'm just trying to think, how do I, how do, I do this? Um... She's going to uh, use her awakened mind to kind of, in its inner head, ask to it telepathically, basically. You could use a friend right now, couldn't you? And I suppose a stranger more than anyone else might be better. We're here for something, and I'm sure, well, you have ways to come back alive if you want. You killed my friends, though. My will-o'-wisps. Did I, though? They were the ones who were hostile. I am but someone who recently came upon the scene and knew no hostility, do I? I have not much in this fight except for the long term. No, do I know of your previous action. Is that so? And yet is not is the fact is the fact not that you tried to be diplomatic that I am trying to be diplomatic right with you right now, not a sign. You did not even introduce yourself to me. Perhaps if I were to give you a name if I if you give me a name, you could perhaps do all this on better terms. I do not wish to be a foe of nature of this mountain, nor of thee. And perhaps we could go a little bit more respect on both of our parts. Hmm? We always presume that there's violence on the side when there's an attack, but it's not reasonable negotiation cannot be done. Information, perhaps, and I wish to know what you are. Not encountered a creature such as yours, and I would also ask what you would like in return. We're trying to find a lead on this wanderer. In terms of finding its location more. And if I would ask, what would you like in return, and how can I know you to be trusted and what you are? What's happening? Uh, is this all silent, I assume, right? This is all like, yeah, but here's a question. Has that thing stopped moving? It has, well, your foot, I believe, was still on top of it, right? Yeah, so what's happening right now? I think, like, as she's trying to talk to her, she's going to, like, gently, like, tap uh, your foot and kind of whisper silently, move it away for a moment. Um, does she... I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. She, she doesn't, doesn't trust any of this right now. Right now. She, she will step, step back. back but... And with the amount of that I've been talking, can I try to diplomat whatever this is? Mm-hmm. Cool. While this is happening, Tom's going to take the great sword out of the bag of holding. I'm going to inspiration that. It's a 13, but I want to inspiration to see if it can get better. Okay. Yasmin received inspiration last night. Seventeen. Okay. Fine. Fine. What? What? What do you want to know? Specifics. I wish to know your name, 
and what creature you are. I wish are you still spells. speaking in your mind? Yes. My, my okay. name is uh, Yasmin, which is a pleasure. I wish we could have met under better circumstances. And I wish to know what you know of the Wanderer. You say that you may not tell your secrets, but we all see that if we're looking to benefit each other. And best we start on equal terms, hmm? So, Trad. It's my name. Has she heard of the name before? No. She nods. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. And may I ask what you are, at least? To us mortal beings, what we may know you as? Oni. Uh, this is something that you would recognize from uh, essentially childhood ghost stories. Like the... It's it's like the Freddy Krueger of, of this world. Ah, got you. Yeah, this, the creature that comes at night. Mm -hmm. And what Rise like form is is it like a devil or is it like rumored to be like a devil or a demon or what? Um, essentially, it's it's um, I think it's just an ogre. I don't think it's. Hold on, let me see if I have it. Giant, though. Right now he is in small human form. Not supernatural necessarily. Mm -hmm. No stories would twist it to believe it, to be mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. And I'd be a drown myself from far away, I suppose. I don't care. What do you want? I told you, friend. What you know of the wonder its whereabouts? The woman who we're looking for. This cat. The arm moves swiftly and points to the very far end of the room. Uh, there is a crack forming in the wall. There. She's gonna pick up the arm with one hand, like carefully go towards the wall. Is there a way it can be broken or like she can push up against it a bit? Yes. It's, it's kind of like uh, you could dig your way into it, uh, or you could try to break in. I think she's going to look to you and say, can someone try to break through there or dig? There may be a trap, so best if someone can dig. Griff holds his dagger up. <laughs> Look at all this. <laughs> and I guess she'll nod. He just shrugs, walks over there. He's just gonna start chipping away. What is Leandra doing? She's. I don't know. She's <laughs> not entirely know, right? happy with. She's she's not entirely happy with the situation. She has no idea what this woman is negotiating with that thing. Mm -hmm. is there, Can I see like... through that crack at all? Um, not really. It's completely dark back there. Um, and your dark vision. Yeah, I suppose you can see something. You can see uh, what looks to be a glass orb. Like sitting on the ground, or is it bouncing yes, around? Yes, it is colors? on the ground. And it is not glowing in any way. Mm, all right. I was thinking about Missy stepping in there, but then I can't get out, so I'll just keep digging. Right. It's not like a chamber. It's more like a... Um, okay, like a little nook? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like it was it was dug into and then buried. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll just chip away until I get enough out of no. there and I can just kind of dig out the rest of it. Grab it. <laughs> Everybody, you you have a fighter, you have a druid, but let's leave the warlock <laughs> to dig <laughs> <with> the dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a <laughs> chest or a waist-high rock or any any sort of ledge in the in the cave? Um, 
Can I give him uh, my crowbar? Maybe that'll help. Um, possibly. Um, there isn't anything like that in here, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Griff, as you uncover this thing, you do find the glass orb. And as you lift it up, there is nothing inside. No, then she'll ask the... Do I see this? Yes. She'll ask Jew and ask, what is that? Wanderer. Hey, boys. And were you after this yourself, or were you protecting it? She wouldn't shut up. She blinks. I couldn't break it, so I hid it. I see. And what do you plan to do now? Assuming we let you go. Recover. And then hunt you down. Would I know, like, how these things can be killed? Like, if if we try to destroy this arm, is that enough, or...? Probably. Uh, if it is still... Uh, like, the severed arm is still moving, so likely uh, other parts of the body are still alive. I need you all to... Then I look to the others. I need you all to look for the other body parts, and we need to further destroy this. But I thought we were friends. friends. She'll pause, <laughs> and she'll say, hold on a thing. Yes, but you've just admitted your plan, and my question is... Why should I leave you alive for? We are friends, of course, and I won't hurt you, but... Trust, yes? I am one of favors, and if I were to leave you alive, what favor would you do me? You said you would hunt us down, is there not greater targets or greater things to worry about? So you've heard us speak of greater threats already, hmm? I'm your friend, yes, and I will pay the courtesy, but if you attempt to hurt us or attack us well, then is that courtesy not being disrespected? It's good of you to be honest, as I try to be honest. I... I am not one for this kind of thing. So what I will do for you is I will rid you of that one. And the finger points at Leandra. And that's the favor I can do for you. Can I insight it? If it's telling the truth? Um, I'll try to. Not really, because there's not really much of anything to oh, read. Okay. But you can probably take it at its word. <laughs> As they're talking, I'm gonna give Rowan her crowbar back and just kind of carry, buddy, and kind of hold it out. And Leander will be looking for body she'll, parts. She'll but, uh, she'll take uh, it. We make this thing. Then I think she'll say to it, "Oh, if you don't wish to come out to me after sure," and I will say this. She kind of pauses a moment. If you're looking for others to hunt, then perhaps do not do so alone, and perhaps some of us can aid thee. But do know that if you know of this court of the court of the oblivion, they may be worthy targets to fight or work against. All I say is that when you go against mortals as a collective, be it a night hunter or otherwise, then the large masses may, may turn against thee, hmm? Tom's gonna help Leandra look for body parts. Yep, and okay. I'm gonna... She smiles at Tom. You. We're gonna put them in a pile, at least she is. I think she's gonna, like, hold up a finger for them to wait before they're gonna burn it? No. no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't care who you are. No, he killed our friend. She look, she's gonna like say, I guess, with the arm and says, I'll do what I can, but do know that I cannot control the actions of others, yes? 
she kind of says with like a bit of annoyance to, to this thing in her head. She's like, it's almost like a scoff, like it's like a lady like scoff. <laughs> You're saying that to the hand or to Leandra? Yeah, uh, to the hand telepathically. Okay. <laughs> if you do not dominate them, you are weak, and thus we are not worthy of being friends. Dominate them? She kind of raises an eyebrow at the... You think I'm capable of such? I think you should be. Does she know if she is? <laughs> that is not something uh, on her repertoire. <laughs> um, Leander will pick up the arm unless you stop her. I think she'll say to the arm, like, I'm afraid I cannot, and if you say then we are not worthy of friends on that condition, I am afraid this may be out of my hands. She kind of is being honest with this thing, I guess. And Frank? Ah, uh, but the weak go st grow strong, as today hath shown. But perhaps one day, if we ever meet again, I will be stronger, and such friendship may be worthy. But fate is that as it, as it is. Hmm? She kind of wow. says to it in its head. And none of us know this is going on. Oh, oh that, this is so if that wasn't telepathic, I'd have so many questions. I, I know, yeah. right? But it's a moot point at this point. Unless unless Yasmin tries to stop her, she's taking the arm and adding it to the pile. She's not going to actively try to stop her. She's like letting her do that. And she also said to it, you know, I can't control the actions of others, so... The hand flips you off as Leandra takes it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. She will turn to Griff. Do you have another bonfire in you? I have bonfires all day. Nice. Let's, let's bonfire all these pieces and any more fine. Best to try to cut up the yeah. I think she actually knows she wants that. It's more like she's just going to look to the orb, I guess, and then look to the others. Yeah, and, uh, Rowan will take it. Oops, sorry. Go ahead, Griff. Concentration lasts for a minute, so I'm just gonna cast it and let it hang out. Okay. Nice. She'll take a curious look at uh, this orb thing. Uh, Griff is still holding it, right? Like, yeah, or did he? Like, tucked it down like a football. Yeah. Like, like, what the heck is that thing? You know? Um, then, you then were... I think Yasmin's gonna approach you. She's gonna, like, when you ask that, I say, I think that might be what we're looking for. The Wanderer. Would you mind if I take a look? One Tom's gonna you alone? toss uh, Alchemist Fire on the bonfire. Nice. Okay. Can I check a like a couple of shots of fireballs at it, just because? Sure. Fireballs at me. And yes. Maybe we should let Tom look at the orb. I think I would like that. Yes, please. What arm? Tom, catch! Yes! No, no don't stop! Uh, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Eyes go wide like, oh! Um... <laughs> I think it's the orb for the cat, maybe. Tom will uh, use the ring of identify on it. Yes! Okay. The Dakota ring. Uh huh. <laughs> I love Laundry that. And magic is on this orb. Uh, it's um, conjuration magic. So identify doesn't doesn't tell me exactly what it is. I think it. Oh, you're it right. Doesn't... I think it does tell you. Yeah, it does. I think, I think it, it does, does tell you. It, it doesn't have to if you works. want us to solve a puzzle here. No, not not really. <laughs> um, as you are holding your ring out to it, you gather the that it is conjuration magic and you kind of uh, see in your mind's eye uh, a cat form inside of the glass ball and as you blink in front of you is a small cat inside of the ball um, it's just her head and she kind of swirls around a little bit her head moves all the way around doing a full uh, 360 turn she looks back at you Tom 
Oh, hello there. Uh, can we get you out of there? Oh, I wish. Uh, hello, um, your name, please? I'm Tom. Are you holding, you're holding it out, right, Tom? Or am I just, like, holding it out with the head in the ball? <laughs> I think Tom's holding it. Okay, and do we hear its voice or no? Yes, everybody can hear it. Okay, I think she'll approach and bow to and say, Hello, I'm Yasmin. Hello. Hi, and I'm Leandra. Hi. Talon. Mm. And I'm Rowan. Just kind of gives a weird look to this weird good cat's head and said this thing like, um... She takes special interest in Rowan. Oh... I was like you once. Uh, like me in what way exactly? She stops to think. Well, in many ways, really. Human, well, half-elf, whatever. Um, curious. A little bit of crazy magic here and there. You know, all the fun stuff. Ah. She nods, like, interesting. Uh, so, what are we doing? We were sent to find you. Oh? Well, it sure took a while. Yes. We had a divine delay. Hmm. You know, I think I know. What you mean? I think uh, Yasmin will ask. Uh... Sorry, just how do you pronounce their name? Is it Tay T? Just asking Eric. Tay. All right. Does the name Taya ring a bell, perhaps? Yes, of course. She was my best friend a long time ago. She smells like that, that bitch. bitch. She kind of, her smile grows at that. Oh, I suppose <laughs> she sent us here. Well, uh, and I apologize if the relationship was not exactly fruitful. And if I may ask something perhaps curious. Yes? She's going to hold up like a bottle. It's kind of like a glass perfume bottle with kind of a, almost kind of weird ink looking thing and it says, is this perhaps familiar to you? Whatever the substance is, she kind of side glances it. Cat's head swirls, um, kind of it flips upside down and moves left to right. You can tell she's trying to get a better look at this thing. And she'll try to give it give a proper look as she can. Hmm. That's strange. That is, that's growing. Do you know that that's growing? Yes, I simply do not know what it is and what it might try to do. Well, some things are beyond our comprehension and other things are just in need of experiments. Why don't you give it to that one? She looks over at Talon. He looks like he's good at experiments. <laughs> drink, 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 drink. <laughs> also, incoming spam on Identify. I guess she'll, she'll offer a nod and hand it carefully. I think she advise. Let's be careful. With this. Not to get it on you. This was this is what I get for making deals with Al or was she an alchemist, I think? Yes, she was an alchemist. With alchemists, and I take the bottle. Oh hush now, hush now, now, now. It's just an unknown substance. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I could end up like him, and I point down the Budjum's body. I suppose. But what is the fun if there's not risk in such adventure? 
You want it back? You can take it. I go after you had a fucking fight and sort it out. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I guess... What the hell? Talon takes a sip of it. <laughs> oh my god, he did it. Can you believe it? It's kind of what I do. His name is Mikey. He'll eat anything. <laughs> Yasmin looks very surprised at the moment. It's like, what? Did he Did he try to identify it or he just sipped it? He just sipped it. He just sipped it. He made a deal with an alchemist for some kind of potion that I would try uh -huh. anything that was presented to him. He made a deal with an alchemist to be a guinea pig for a potion of invisibility that I don't think he's used at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Still, that was that's awesome. Still waiting for that right moment. After, <laughs> I think after you take a sip, I'm going to try to take it back, but do you like wince at that? Oh, he'll now, gladly hand it back. The liquid, though you only get a very small amount, quickly coats the entirety of, your, of the inside of your mouth. And it's a very thick and oily substance. It Ugh. almost reminds you of mucus. Ew. <laughs> Ugh. Ew. As you reach into your mouth to try to, like, scrape it out, it does come out in very long strings. Ugh. I'm glad I'm done eating. <laughs> you. Uh, <what? laughs> Anybody want to taste? What is that? <laughs> no, thank you. Just kind of Perhaps. looks like sick. How does it taste? Find that may be a wise choice. She kind of blinks. Very confused right now. It has it a really like if you swallow a snot. <laughs> Okay. Right, right. I Does don't it... want to know how you know what that tastes like. Just say. <laughs> but do Does you it... feel a difference? Allergies. Does it... Uh... Does it taste like volcanic rock that's been soaked in giant piss for days? I've never had volcanic rock, but if it tastes like this, then yes, it does. <laughs> oh. I've noticed you left out the giant piss. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're going to die in a day. <laughs> There's nothing that can be done. Wait, what? Well, if he drank a potion of giant piss rock, uh, there's <laughs> nothing we can do. <laughs> well, I'm still confused how he knows what giant piss tastes like in the first place. Let's just. I don't. I'm just <laughs> assuming. <laughs> Tom is gonna try the decoder ring on the mysterious potion. Okay. If you hold up the ring. Nothing comes to you. Aww. As I said, some mysteries are beyond. Beyond us, beyond magic, beyond what can be understood. I don't know what that is or where you got it, but I am concerned that it's growing. As am I, and she's gonna put the lid back on the bottle. But best if not get in the wrong hands, perhaps, and I don't know how much we can destroy it. Otherwise, and I suppose the fact that it's... I found it might be a sign, if anything. But perhaps we can further investigate. But it seems that... Teo did not... Uh, know what it was either. But... Shall we get well, on that? Well, if she didn't know... Indeed. But she did mention the Wanderers might perhaps be involved so that they connect to the rest of all this. He kind of says with a slight shrug. Oh. I see. The Wanderers. You thought I was a Wanderer? That's... I thought of you were, yes. Apologies if I was not entirely hmm. accurate in my attempted assessment. Did that stupid thing tell you I was a wanderer? It's made that claim, yes. No. I, told I told it that so it would stop trying to kill me. Ah. Well. I suppose with the look of it that worked. creature, yes. 
Well, I suppose if I may ask, what are you? If that not be a touchy question than asking. She's going to try to... I... And what do we do with you? Well... Hmm. Let's start at the beginning first, shall we? I am... I was... A half-elf at one time. Much like that one. Looks at Talon again. And like that one, I was very eager to experiment. And there are some types of magic you shouldn't experiment with. And when you do, sometimes... Your entire soul is trapped within an object and you are forced to take the form of a cat for all eternity. I have but one way out and well, I don't really want to take it because I don't know what would happen. I see, and how long have you been wandering like this? Hmm. I don't know couple centuries, probably? Time becomes unimportant. Time As has. do names and people and emotions. Makata said that, um, well, in fact, others have said that you might be trying to create a magical pen and that you were looking for the components to make that happen. Did you find them? No. I was not successful because we were ambushed. And... Are you from Oakheart? Yes. I see. Lady Leandra Shepard. You've been... on quite a journey, haven't you? Indeed. Well... Welcome to Silden. This is my second time here. Quite interesting. So anyways, I was not successful. And, well, perhaps we should finish that job. Hmm? The goddess thinks it's important that we do. And I want to return to Oakheart. So, shall, should we help you? We'd be happy to, I think. She looks around. She nods. She nods. And I'm going to look to the bonfire moment. Does it seem like the body parts are decomposing? Are they trying to move away? No, they have all been burned away at this point. And she will, she will ask the orb. We killed the thing that attacked you, I believe. But it came back. Tried to. And we've burned it again. Is there more we need to do? No, I'd just like it burn, to stay dead. Just destroy the head. That kind of thing. Okay. And have we found the head as a part of our searches for body yeah, parts? Yeah, you definitely had that thrown in there. Okay. Okay. So, shall we go? It is uh, nearly nighttime at this point. <laughs> Unless we wish to camp over here, which is an option if we wish to go in the morning. I'd rather not stay here if it's all the same to everyone else. Just go this place. It gives me the vibes. Off we go, I suppose. All right. So, about how far are you guys planning on going? Are you going to camp tonight, or are you going to travel through the night? I think the day is still young. We can travel quite a ways. What's near? You said Eric said it was yeah. nearly yeah. night. Yes. Yes, it's nearing evening. The sun is on its yep. way down. Are we leaving Budrum? What are we doing with Budrum? Aww. Uh, Tom would like him. to uh, sort of make a stretcher or sled and take him along. I agree. I'm 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 not leaving him. I don't know about you all, but uh, I know. Yeah. I think that stretcher idea sounds good, Tom. Mm -hmm. Ew. Are you bringing that? Yep. He's our friend. I think you've been that ball a bit long. I don't. I wouldn't expect you to quite understand it. 
Was no, your no, friend no. that? Yes. I understand diseases, which is what you're going to get by traveling with a dead body, but far be it from me to stop you. <laughs> Baroness, you're good with nature. Can you get some flowers for him? <laughs> yeah, at some point we have to do something. <laughs> yes. I... <laughs> you can't just keep adventuring with us like this. Um, I think Butcher I can use... travels to level 20. <laughs> So I we think have to I, basically aww. bury him where he died then. That that just doesn't sound it, right. It doesn't sound right to me either. Nope. Hmm. Fine, fine. <laughs> Since you're begging, I'll do it. <laughs> Step back. She swirls around in her uh in her orb for a bit and Budrum starts to glow with a bright white light and he condenses down into a small marble oh, <laughs> oh. Ah, wow that will mm. last for five days you have that long well, thank you thank you very much Griff picks it up <laughs> we leave it. <laughs> no, <Probably>. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Talon will take it if there's a threat of leaving it. No, Griff picked it up. Griff picked it up. <laughs> it's cost him really throwing it off a cliff. Okay. No, not really. <laughs> Steady on, Skywalker. <laughs> nice. As you guys uh, start traveling up the path away from the cave, the cat will say, you know what would be a great place to bury him? You should throw him into the water behind Oakheart. It's beautiful. He's a dwarf. Dwarfs love water, except when they're being bathed or uh, having to drink it instead of ale or... You've been in okay. that ball way too long, haven't you? I'm not sure I agree with your uh, estimate there. <laughs> hey, you, <laughs> you think, were we supposed to ask her about that water in the tree and all that stuff? We have, yeah, there's a lot of questions. Okay, good. But it's hard to know, it's hard to know what's relevant after a year away. That's true. Hmm has been some time, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I know they were worried about the water feeding the tree and not enough water. I suppose there's only one way to find out. I'm sure. We've only been gone for, what, a week? No. Um, like a year and a week. You've been a year and a week. Oh, great. Like I've I lost said, another one. Uh huh. That's well, they fly by fast these days, don't they? Hmm. Well, when you reach 50 centuries, you never really know what you're doing anymore. Anyways. <laughs> Whoa. And Eric, I'm gonna have to go soon. I know, I'm getting ready to wrap it up now. Okay. Um, as you guys continue traveling down the path. She brings up one bit of knowledge for you for the next time. Do you guys know what we're looking for? Were you told? I'm looking for nope. a pen. <laughs> well, yes, I will make the pen, but I need something first. What do you need? Hmm. This will be fun. We are hunting Pegasus. Uh, oh. You don't have Griff, to kill it, do you? Griff glances at Atticus. No, of course we don't have to kill it. I just need the feather. I'm sure it's going to give it to you willingly, yeah? Hmm. I don't know. That's what the watchmen were for, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> you see what happened. <laughs> so I hope you guys are good at uh, talking to Celestials. 
Oh, I, <laughs> I will try. Orb Lady, I think it's a Pegasus or Pegasi. Just uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she's going to ignore you. She doesn't know how to react to being correct. <laughs> and that's where we're going to pick up next time. Nice. Cool. Nice.